Well, welcome back, everyone. I was just with you a few hours ago with the Amer the amazing Bernadette uh, Br Br Bruckner from Austria. That's right. So we did some traveling today, and now we're in the U.S. Miss Liz is in Canada, so we're still traveling. So grab your chairs and grab your teas, your coffee, juice, glass of water. You do not need to drink tea on Tea Time with Miss Liz. Miss Liz serves storytelling and words. And I have the incredible returning guest from season three, four, and now five, <laughs> Zachary Hagen is here. And he's going to be talking to us about his new book and his cup of tea and his tea tonight that he'll be serving is targeting education and ascension. I think I'm saying it right. I'm not, I'll get him to correct it. Uh, and he's nodding yes, so I'm good. So that's a good thing. So before we get started, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel. And we're going to get you to ring that little doorbell so you can listen to these tea times. And you can check out Zachary's tea times uh, from season three, season four, and now season five. So let's get started with the disclaimer and a little bit of Zachary's bio. And then we're going to get him in here and we're going to serve some different style of tea tonight with all of you guys. So the disclaimer for Miss Liz's tea time live show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussions, forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection, and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Ms. Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all Tea Time shows are done on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see a Tea Time on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, it is a surprise, special, or a returning rescheduled Tea Time. So we do all of the three. So now a little bit about my guests. Well, for if you haven't seen season three and season four, you're going to see Zachary for the first time tonight. So we're going to do just a quick rerun through his books and all of that, and then we're going to get into some other stuff. So let's welcome back Zachary Hagens, the talented fantasy author of the Eternal Chronicles collection. Dive into realms of fantasy and creativity with his exceptional storyteller. Zachary Hagens is... Hagen is a Florida-based fantasy author and editor. He lives with his wife, Claudia, and their dog, Flynn. When he's not busy writing his next book or working with an editing client, you can often find him walking around his neighborhood or hiking. From a young age, Zachary was on, on troll. I'll get him to say that word. By the world of stories, whether it was the stories his parents read to him from his blue bedroom storybooks, or the first two series he read, The Chronics of Narnia, and a series of unfortunate events. His taste continues to develop throughout his years of reading. The influence, influences of his first series, The Internal Chronicles, includes renowned, renowned author Christopher Palani. I think I'm saying it wrong. I'll get him to say it. So let me get Zachary in here. Welcome, Zachary. Thank you. It's so good to be back. I know I didn't say a few things right, so let's correct. Let's get those all out there and correct all those bobos that Miss Liz made. Yeah, sure. So it's enthralled by the world of story, and it's uh, Christopher Paolini. 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 Mm -hmm. So it's it's the letters, right? And I'm so glad that I have a teacher here tonight so you can teach me a little bit. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's when you get all of the the etymological mishmash that English is, where you have French and Italian inspired words from all over the place in the same paragraph that it can it can get tricky. Well, and my tongue just twists once in a while. Like yeah. it, it just does this old magic trick. It, like it's out doing its twirls and spins and all that. And I'm just like, not now. I need to pronounce something. So, so Zachary, let's go back a little bit for the who haven't, uh, listeners who haven't heard of, uh, haven't heard of you uh, in season three and four. Let's go back a little bit. So, who was Zachary as a little boy, and who is Zachary now? So as a kid, I was always stapling little pieces of paper together and then drawing pictures and writing um, the garbled mess of a, uh, of a child and called them books. And so I always wanted to be a writer um, and I always wanted to be a teacher too. The two things that I did were play school and play writer. And I have the extreme privilege of getting to do both of the things that I wanted to do as a kid, as an adult. So that's not something a lot of people can say. So I recognize that that's a big privilege of mine. Um, and so far I have written four books. The fifth one is just about done. It'll actually be done this next week um, oh. and will be coming out in October. Eternity's End will be out on October 22, this fall. You know, Zachary, every time you come on Tea Time, you have a new book coming out not far away. Yes. <laughs> I've noticed that. And guess last time you were on too, you were having this book come out. You were finishing up this one, correct? Yeah, I think the one that we're mostly focused on today was Eternity's Edge. So that's the fourth book in the series. It is the setup to the concluding chapter. And it's Actually, it was going to be the last book, but it was just getting so big that it felt right to split it um, sort of in the middle. So the last book will be a little bit shorter, but otherwise it would have been a, a massive tome larger than all of the others to, to get through. And I felt like that it didn't, it would have looked very odd on the shelf and would have been a little bit overwhelming, I think, for readers used to about the 60 to 70, 80,000 word count. So, Wow. And I, and I think the last time we talked, we were talking about how the, it was getting big, right? And it was. you weren't sure if you were going to do the next book or not. So I, I think it's really amazing how you put these books together. Uh, so how do you get the covers and all of that picked? Do you, do, do you create them? Do you have a student that creates them? How I don't. I actually, I hire someone. Um, I, I use the same artist off of Fiverr all the time. And I know that their their name is in, in the credits at the very beginning of the book. I just can't remember it off the top of my head because he only gives his um, username. But if anyone has access to Kindle Unlimited, they would absolutely be able to look and see um, Eunice. I think Y-O-U-N-E-S-S -S on Fiverr. Um, he does an amazing job and I didn't expect to find someone so wonderful on Fiverr, but he does really incredible work. Um, and I, I was very lucky to find the kind of work that he does. <laughs> my brother just walked in the door and my dog decided to say hello to him again. But that's okay. The animals want to have a say too, right? So let me just... I, th I think they're about done. So I think we'll be all right. Um, but yeah, so um, he's a wonderful artist. He's been very gracious. Yeah, I, I will probably take this into the other room so that we don't have to worry so much about the noise. And a little glimpse of a, a bit more of a mess than I'd like to show, but we'll just quickly move. <laughs> so a little bit different, but that way. <laughs> different. Well, I think the last time you were on, wasn't it the kitty cats? I don't. I never had any 
cats. It, it was probably oh. my dog before. Oh, okay. So we actually got a new dog since the last time I was on, and they, they're they active. They play. They love each other very much. They're like siblings, which is well, pretty cool. I, I like the little extra sounds, sounds that come in because it, it shows that it's real and raw, right? We're live right now, so, you yeah. know. It's, it's exciting. So it's not a curated studio experience. It's people's lives that we get to peek into. And that's exciting. Right. When you're not doing live, when you're doing the recording, then you can always take that out, right? Do all the edits and all that. But I like the live shows because you just never know what happens, right? Bloopers happen. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> uh, I can imagine what the generated AI is going to come out with, with the, for little clips for tonight's tea time. Might have the little puppy <laughs> saying something. <laughs> So Zachary, I want to. So the covers are done by a, an, an illustrator on Fiverr, correct? Yes. So how did you find this? Was did he do all the books, or? So I actually had a different artist for the first book, um, for its first release, and it didn't seem to fit with the vibe as well. And so I looked for someone else to do the second cover, and he did such an amazing job that I ended up having him read you the first cover. So initially, um, the first edition of Eternity's Well had um, the four main characters on the front with the well in the center. And I liked that just fine. It seemed to be a decent cover. But then um, Eternity's Mirror, um, the cover that I had done for that, was so good that I decided then and there that I wanted all of the covers to be done in that style. So I redid, I had him redo the first cover and um, he did books three and four. And as soon as I am ready to pull the trigger, he will be doing the cover for book five as well, which I'm excited about. And I'll be doing, I'll probably be doing a re reveal for that one in September. Oh, oh, cool. September. Check it out. So the book is being launched in October, correct? Mm hmm So you're giving us a sneak peek in September. Yeah, so there will be, it'll be available for pre-order probably by the end of the month. Oh. And then um, cover reveal in September and release in October. Well, that's cool. So, Zachary, I want to talk to you about the the, the new book, Eternity Re Regurge. We Re refurge. So the newest book that's out is Eternity's Edge. Oh, okay. So I so the refurge is what book is that one? Eternity's Refuge was book three. Oh, so that's book three. Okay, so I had the wrong one here. Let me get it here. I'm telling you, I gotta go to class. I teachers <laughs> gotta teach you tonight, guys. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about the, the new one, Eternity Edge. So Eternity's Edge, like I said, it sets up the final chapter of the series. And it picks up at the very end of Eternity's Refuge, which has sort of a tragic ending. It's a promise waiting to be filled, fulfilled and grief and the characters at the beginning of Eternity's Edge, Elior especially, is wrestling with guilt, survivor's guilt, and um, but also the the beauty of moving on and the fact that life continues. So there's continued romance for our characters. There's intrigue there's the reconquering of a nation and Ooh. political loss political gain and a command given by their deity Elon to do something that seems crazy but will bring about the the victory that they are needing so is there one character that you brought through all of the books that you really find amazing and inspiring and, and really kick ass kind of character. Oh goodness. Um, I think that 
if we're going to call it kick ass, I think that we would definitely have to call Opal, Opal Stronghand. She is this driven young woman. She took over as queen for her father in Nanani um, before she was ousted from her throne, but she never let that stop her. And she's just continued to lead. And she has this fiery personality that even when she's not in charge, she still is because she has such a heart to lead and a heart for people, but she also doesn't take any crap. Well, and that's why I asked you who was a kick-ass because there's always a kick-ass in, in, in these types of books, right? In these fantasy books, yeah. you know, there's all, it's always like the, the person on the throne, right? Like a, a game of thrones. There's always that person that's in that throne, right? So, so is that your favorite character in, in this series? I wouldn't say she's my favorite, um, but she's, I mean, the characters, especially the main characters, which she's one of, are so dear to me that it's hard to parse out who is the favorite. If I had to pick a favorite, I'd probably say that it is Elior, the, the main, main character, just because I feel like he represents everyone. There's so much wrong with him at the beginning of the series that the growth feels inspiring and attainable because it's slow. He has so much to learn and to become that it doesn't feel like he's larger than life at the beginning. In fact, I think a lot of readers would probably feel a sense of superiority over him at the beginning of the series. Um, I had one student that read the books, um, well, that read the first book anyway, describe him as whiny. Um, and I didn't get it, but then going back and rereading my first book, I, I can see whiny, especially in the early chapters. Um, when he first lost his brother and he didn't know what to do and the search was about to be called off and his brother was about to be declared legally dead, you know, what, what do you do in that situation other than go woe is me unless you have a plan of action, which is what launches him into the adventure and the rest of the book and in the rest of the series. But it's, it, he had to grow past that momentary lapse into being a crybaby. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, he, he went from crybaby to inspiring growth of the story, right? So, you yes. showed the transformation of a whiny person to growing and maturing, and, and that through the journey of these books. Yes, to the point where in the last um, couple books, he's the leader of the movement that they are part of. He's a commanding presence, even though he doesn't necessarily always feel like it. And there's, there's work to be done and he does it. He learns how to, instead of being a victim, be a victor and protect the people that he loves. So Zachary, we have a question here for you. What got you into the fantasy uh, genre of the book writing? So the, what got me into fantasy? I think it was just the fact that it was a genre that I loved reading so much and I was the most familiar with. Um, you know, I've read a lot of dystopian as well, but it didn't feel like something I could take myself seriously with as a first time author. I think that there's so many more liberties that you can take writing fantasy that it doesn't need to be as believable as a dystopian or a science fiction might be. And so I was able to do it with a lot more ease without as much research. And I think that made it more accessible. Not that any genre is ever easy to write, but I actually tried my hand at writing other genres initially. I have, I think the first four or five chapters of a mystery novel um, sitting somewhere in the depths of my computer um, it probably will never see the light of day because it was deeply terrible and horribly researched. Um, <laughs> maybe the concept will come back, but that particular novel is dead. Um, and so 
when I tried writing fantasy, and especially once I had a very good understanding of what I wanted the story to be, the story kind of told itself. And I think that for something so difficult, you're, any aspiring author should search for where it feels as easy as possible, especially for the first book. It's never going to be easy. I mean, there was a time with the first book, um, I happened to not be working at the time and I was writing 3,500 words a day. That's a wow. lot of writing in a day. That's so, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was only able to do that because I really had nothing else going on. I, I had nothing else. Um, and I just wanted to do something to occupy my time. My wife was working. I had lost um, my job due to a, a health issue. And I needed something. And writing became that thing. And I'm actually grateful for losing that job because otherwise I wouldn't have the series completed. I would never have found the time to do it if I hadn't. And I think that not everyone is going to be put in that circumstance. And so the advice that I would give stands even more. You have to find what feels easy in order for it to work because it's such a mammoth task. Less than 1% of the people that attempt to write a book actually finish one. So it's it's a very, I hate to use the word elite, but it's a very rarefied club to be in. Someone who's actually finished a book, even though there are so many books that you can purchase and buy, so many more could have been written if someone, if people could have been able to stick with it. Yeah. So it's it's challenging. It's it's a work of solitude, it's a work of heavy heavy mind lifting. Um, and whether you're doing a lot of research and compiling and curating information or inventing something, it's still incredibly mentally taxing. It's a lot of work because I'm working on a children's book and I got to create all the characters and the scenery. And there's so much back work that I did not realize, right? Well, I yeah. wrote my tea books and I was just like, okay, that wasn't so bad. But children, oh my goodness, there's a lot of work to go. There is. And especially with, with fantasy, I think the most challenging thing that you can get really caught in the weeds on if you're not careful is world building. Um, the world has to feel real and it has to feel lived and it has to make sense. Um, and some people have gone a lot more in depth with their world building than I have. I am, I did not go nearly as in depth as Tolkien or um, Paolini did with their books. Um, I don't have a language system, for example. Um, I did not feel that it was necessary to tell the story. I don't have a magic system that demands there be a language that magic is spoken in. I don't have, um, I didn't have the need of, of a different language. Um, it's sort of, I sort of imply that former languages did exist, but with globalization sort of melded into one tongue, which made it a lot easier for cross communication and people and to not have to create um, explanations as to why the mer people could speak the same language as the humans. I did not need that headache. Well, it's a lot of work, and I'm so glad that you're sharing that, Zachary, because a lot of people just think, oh, we'll just type a bunch of words on a piece of paper, and, and we got a book. But you've got so much behind to do. You've got to build a character. You've got to build a scenery. You've got to build the world, like you said. Um, is it going to be a long or short story? You know, there's so much... That, there's so much behind it. Like, uh, I want to talk about the editing because you also do editing. So do you do your own editing on your books, Zachary, or do you have somebody else? Um, I used to have someone else do it. Um, and they taught me so much that in the last couple books I have edited myself. Um, and I'm a lot more careful with my writing as well. So in the first couple books, I was using a lot of what, um, I think she called them like sense words or sight words where the characters were nodding or sighing or shrugging their shoulders or looking. And I really, even if I have to make the character look somewhere um, to get them to notice something, I'm not using the word look or see. Um, 
there there's more impetus behind it because look is just you know it's it's moving your eyes but if you're turning it if a character turns their head or um casts their gaze it feels a lot more visceral and emotive um and so subtle differences like that make a big difference um the broad strokes of the story um sometimes need more editing than others. I think that with this current book, I'm planning on doing a full read through of the book before I send it to anyone to start marketing it. Um, Cause I, I know there were several nights where I was half asleep trying to write a little bit more um, with the book that I'm writing right now. So that one will probably need a few scenes added in or taken out or edited a little bit. Um, but all, all that to say is, yes, I, I do most of my own editing at this point. I will get opinions from people on scenes. My wife is one of my biggest fans, so I'll sometimes run something by her. Like, does this make sense for the characters? Does this feel like something that they would actually do? Um, and, that, and that helps quite a bit to get um, a second opinion, even if it's not a second pair of eyes. Um, I've gotten to the point where I've mastered the skill of killing my darlings. I don't need to be nice to my own writing because if I'm too nice to it, the book isn't good. But if I'm really brutal to my own writing, well, then the book tends to be great. So, Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> be brutal when yeah. you're writing. Brutal honesty and being able to be objective about what is and isn't good is... is a real skill of an editor, and especially if you're editing your own work, you have to be honest with yourself. Just because you like something does not mean that someone else will. And sometimes even if you don't like something doesn't mean that it doesn't work for the story. Right. So it's, does this work for the story? Does this work? Is it grammatical? Those are the sorts of questions that we have to ask and answer without letting our feelings get in the way of it. Well, I think writing a book, we can't really take anything personal, right? Because sometimes a story that we want to share might not be what everybody else wants to read. So we have to, it's almost like that mystery book that you have written and hidden somewhere. I think, I think it'd be interesting to see a mystery book from you, Zachary. I've, I've considered doing it and I actually have, um, sort of a, a Beauty and the Beast retelling, um, that I would like to do where, um, the beauty character would be a, um, what's it called? An investigative reporter. And the beast would be um, accused of a crime that he didn't commit. And part of the experience of falling in love is him proving his innocence. So that's kind of as close as I would probably get to a full on mystery novel. And it would still be within the fantasy genre, just a little bit grittier. I suppose. <laughs> so Zachary, do you have any dragons or fairies or anything in your, in your books? I do. So they, part of the lore of the series is sort of related to all of the creations of those different um, races. So I have, so dragons were sort of went extinct because they were rebelling against the deity in the books and were transformed into jinn. And then, of course, humans are there because they always are. Um, and then I have fairies, elves, and dwarves, and merpeople in Lux Terra. And then it, the world of the books is sort of this flat disk with different kinds of people living on both sides of it. So in Lux Terra, those are the races. On the other side, in Nox Terra, I have goblins centaurs um dryads naiads and a race that i call unders which were made from the soot left over from the creation of the dragons with fire and their little shadow creatures oh i like it shadow creatures we don't want to give too much away we want people to go and buy the book so yes thankfully that's not a plot point but it, it's they're fun to write about because they're sort of the 
the mirror image of the dragons and the djinn in Lux Terra. So if people know much about those races, then they can kind of infer what the unders are like. <laughs> so this book that's coming out in October, can you give us a little bit of insight about it or we can't get any of that tonight? I can, I can give a little bit of a hint. Um, so those who have seen me before or have seen me on other shows will know that I did base the series on um, basically the entirety of the New Testament through to the second coming, um, partially just because it's super fascinating. And there is a verse, I believe it's in Revelation, where it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it would be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man or something like that. And that's the hint. <laughs> Well, you got a little insight, guys. So for all the listeners out there tonight, you got a little bit. So you said by the end of the month, you should be having some pre-sales out there and then the cover release and all that as well, right? Yeah, the cover will be revealed in September. So I'm excited about that one. I want to do a big thing for it because it's the last one. And it's going to be pretty epic. It's, it's probably going to be one of my favorite covers when it's done. Well, and it's got to be a big transfer transformation for you because it's the last one, right? So there's a lot of, uh, th there's a lot to say, oh my goodness, it's done. So do you have any plans of another series or? I don't have another series in the work, but I do have um, plans to finish um, a book called Aisha's Secret, which I started as sort of a, a break, a mental break from Eternal Core Chronicles because I needed one at one point. Um, and it is a retelling of Aladdin um, through the princess's perspective. The twist being that Aladdin is actually the prince, but Aisha, the princess, makes a wish when she finds the genie and switches their lives. Ooh, so you changed the plot. You turned it right around. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I'm excited about it. The... Um, the Jinn are making a return in that series or in that book um, in a slightly different form. So they're always fun to write about. I think that um, I really enjoyed the Children of the Lamp series when I was a kid. Oh. Um, and so I always preferred the spelling of Jinn rather than Genie or anything like that. So um, I'm continuing with that. They're fun to write. They are. So um, I'm going to be doing that. And then potentially when I'm finished with that one, there may be a, I may attempt the dystopian genre um, mm. after that one. Interesting. So there's a lot of upcoming things that you're thinking of doing, yes. right? Every time I have an idea, I have a folder in my notes app that I add to. So I, there's about 25 or 30 potential titles in the pipeline. So I am I have plenty of work probably for the next 15 years. Wow. If not longer. So Zachary, you also have a lot of changes happening in your life as well. Every time we seem to talk, you either move or there's a job change or there's a new book coming out. So what's going on since last time being on Tea Time? So we were lucky enough to spend two years in Mississippi. I worked at a private high school, um, boarding school, and it was a great experience. But um, my wife was seeking a career change, and so it was time for me to look for a new job too. So we just, um, just this last month moved to Florida, and I will be teaching at another private school here um in winter haven and i'm excited about that i'm also excited because the principal is planning on retiring within the next year or two and um part of the reason they decided to bring me on was because i graduated with my master's in educational leadership in december and they would like to train me to become the new principal when she retires well that's really cool and before we went live, I said that that was cool, right? Because you don't have to stay a teacher. You can go to different departments in the educational systems as well, like become a principal 
or, uh, you know, there's different uh, avenues and different pathways. And I, I really think that that's cool. And I think that it's cool that every time we have a tea time, you're moving to a different place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that it won't be the case next time. Maybe if we buy a house, that, I'll take that move, but I don't want to move. Because <laughs> I think the last time we talked, you said, I'm, I don't want to move again. <laughs> I didn't. I, I'm I'm still done with it. I think that th this is a good situation for us, though, because my, my wife now has, um, she's a chaplain, and there weren't many, there weren't any positions for her. Um, so she's working as the office manager at the school that I was working at before. And so now she actually gets to be a chaplain. She gets to do what she loves, and she's about to finish her master's. Um, so right now she's doing PRN work um, in a couple different hospitals. Um, but she'll be, when she's finished with her master's, she'll be able to take on a full-time job and they're building, um, she works, if, if anyone is in the Southeastern United States or even in like the Midwest, they might know Advent Health. So she works for them. Um, and they're building a new hospital just down the road from where we're living. So we're hoping that she'll be able to get a full-time job there when she, um, is finished with her master's. So we're excited for her. Well, that's really cool. And it's nice that she finally gets like to get back into what she loves as well, because I'm sure that helps a lot. Uh, it you know. does. And it's, it's a lot more money than she was making. <laughs> so that's always nice too. <laughs> so Zachary, besides moving again for the third time, because every interview I've done, Zachary's been in a different location. So, uh, I think when, when we first had the first one, you were in Minnesota or you were just moving to? I think we were just about to move away from Minnesota because I had accepted the position down in Mississippi. And then we were in Mississippi the last time we talked. And now I'm in Florida. <laughs> He's a traveling man. He, he's going through the different fantasy worlds. <laughs> Lots of inspiration for different backdrops to stories. <laughs> so Zachary, I want to get into your tea because you gave me targeting education and ascensions. Did I say it right? Yes, ascension. So, so why did you give me those three words, Zach? So I think that the the season of life that I seem to be in is of course I'm still writing. That's that's most of what we talked about, but I've done a lot of continuing education and so my work has largely been targeting education and ascension because i'm a, a large part of why i'm being trained to be the new principal here is to help the school grow and to ascend into um what it can be because it's it's a tiny building but we are just about maxed out in the number of students that we can accept. And so we're about to start waitlisting kids um, and we're ready to grow. Um, and I've just seen a lot of theming. I don't know. It seems like my life tends to have like themes for different seasons. And so right now it seems to be a lot of growth and ascension seems to kind of sit with that because with growth, I think of rising and going higher. So what are you targeting? So targeting, um, we're being very specific with goals right now, my wife and I. So we're, we have very specific financial goals. We have specific work goals. We're, um, we're, um, trying to think if she would even want me to share this. Um, we're hoping we, start we won't share with you. <laughs> the book you in trouble. Soon and I'll, I'll leave it there as far as the specifics with that. But um, things are good. We're, we have goals. We're working towards them. Education is is a big part of making those goals happen, and growth is also kind of a theme for us right now. Well, and I think targeting is a good example as well, right? Because it's in your life. And for all the listeners out there, we all have to set a target, right? A goal in order to get ahead. Um, and yeah. there's something or you hit nothing, right? Right. So is there any target in, in the books? Like anybody shooting any arrows or anything at a target practice? Or 
I don't know that I don't think I actually have anyone shooting any arrows. Oddly enough, even with my love of the Hunger Games and um, other archers in popular culture, I neglected to include an archer. <laughs> now he's going to be like, oh, <laughs> what a missed opportunity. Um, you know what? Maybe maybe Aisha's secret will have to have a character who is a bit of an assassin and uses a bow and arrow. Maybe I'll have to find a way to include that. Well, is the book finalized, the next one? The next one, the it's entirely plotted out. I just need to finish writing it. Well, there you go. You could still add the target in there. Yeah. Still put I the could. arrows in. As far as the, the bones of the book, it's done. It's just the fleshing out and the adding of the prose. So it's it's actually been ready to finish writing for probably a couple of years at this point. Oh. Um, I just wanted to finish Eternal Chronicles before I die, really sat in another project. Yeah. And, I, and here I had to go and give you something to think about. <laughs> 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 and the plot thickens. Miss Liz makes him change it. <laughs> I think well, the last time we talked to you, we were talking about the book, and I was like, do you have that? And you're like, oh, I should have thought of that, too. Yeah. But anyway, the books, I, I think they're good. I think people will enjoy them as they are. And if I can improve them, why not? Absolutely. So I want to get into your favorite color. Your favorite color is teal. Yes. You, you shared this on season three and four, but let's share it again on season five. Why teal? Because it is the color of the ocean. And I love the ocean more than almost anything else. So what is it about the ocean exactly? I think it's just, it's the depth. It's the fact that we don't know much about it, even though most of our planet is covered in it. And there's so much mystery in it, but it feels both familiar and distant at the same time. And I think that that's really fascinating. I think it's really cool that you like the water. Like, and I love the color teal because it's a different type of blue, bluish green, right? And kind of gives you that calming feel, but that play, play feel, kind of curiosity, right? Like, Absolutely. Where, where can it go? And it's like the depth of the ocean, right? We don't know how low it goes and how deep it goes and what's down there, right? Yeah. So do you ever think you ever write a book about the ocean? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That'll happen at some point for sure. So Zachary, you gave me the word tenacious. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Tenacious to describe yourself. So why that word? I can't remember the last time I gave up on anything. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it sounds spoiled, but most of the time, if I want something, I get it eventually. Um, and I think, that especially for a teacher and an author, that, that's an incredibly useful attribute because I don't give up on students um, unless they tell me that they're not willing to learn. And then, you know, that's, that's their choice. Um, but I, I continue to work until a student learns what they need to learn. I continue to write until a book is finished. Um, I, continue on the path that I choose until the goal is achieved. So Zachary, do you, when, when you hear these words, okay, I'm going to give you a bunch of words and I want you to tell me what you think of when you hear these words. Sure. We're going to do something a little playful here. So when you hear the word adventure, what comes to mind? Um, hiking in the mountains. So you're a hiker. Mm -hmm. character two things um, one of course related to writing and the building of a character and um, integrity and being a person of high character intrigue noir or noir um, mystery movies Mystery. Are you a big mystery guy? I do enjoy them. One of my favorite authors um, is Madeline Langle, especially 
um, the book Daddy's Little Girl. I don't know why that one. It's just, it's so compelling. It's frightening, but it's compelling. Daddy's Little Girl, is that based on a true story? It's not. And I said Madeline Langle, but it's not Madeline Langle. It's Mary Higgins Clark wrote that one. I don't know okay, why. No. So. And the word magic. <sighs> magic. Um, magic has a lot of connotations for me. Of course, magic would be a source of power. Um, it's also you know, the magic of childhood and Christmas. And it's also um, the feeling of falling in love. Oh, well, I would have never thought you would have gave me that answer for magic. So has Zachary fallen in love? Oh, yes. I continue to do so um, deeper and deeper with my wife. Um, when we... We met in high school and I knew the day that we met that I wanted to marry her, <laughs> but it took a long time for that to actually happen. But every step along the way where that relationship deepened felt like a spark of magic. Well, I, I love it. I love when, when people fall in love and the magic is there, right? Because you've been together quite a while. So the magic's still there. The love is still there. So that's a good thing. You know, uh, for all the listeners out there, you know, falling in love is incredible, magical. So the, the reason that I asked you about those four words is because I found those four words on your website. And I wanted to understand a little bit more about Zachary on why he picked those four words. And you kind of gave me a little bit of insight onto the way that you write your stories and that as well. It, it has also a personal touch to it. Um, and some of your characters, we talked about this in season four, about the characters on how some of them you you didn't want them to pass on, right? You didn't want to let them go. So mm -hmm. how, in, in, the, in this last book, is there going to be a lot of characters that are going to be going or? Uh, yes and no. Um, so th with this last book, it's it's the end. And so you, you're kind of stepping on a spoiler here and I'm trying to dance around. Okay. No. Okay. Well, we won't, we won't put spoilers <laughs> out guys, but I, I just wanted to understand because building characters for fantasy stories and, and any sort of genre, right? You, you never want to lose a character, but somebody has got to pass on in order for a new character to come in or a new storyline to come. Right. And I think in season four, you had lost two characters, if I believe. There were two characters in Eternity's Refuge that died. And it was really difficult to write those deaths. It was necessary for the plot. But it was heart-wrenching. And especially with one of them, as soon as I had finished that chapter... I closed the computer and I cried and it was hard to get to that point in the book because I knew it was coming. I knew that I had to kill that character off in order for the story to work. Um, but it didn't make it any less difficult because they, they feel like real people. And I'm really looking forward to getting to the end of this, this final chapter in the eternal Chronicles to sort of, right the wrongs that have been made and give the characters the victory that they've so fought for. Well, and, and that's the question. And that's the reason why I asked that question, right? Because when we're writing these stories, it, there is a lot of heart and passion that goes into building the, these storylines and that. And, you know, so when you go and buy a book, you know that that author took his time and passion and purpose and put it into it, right? Into the words and that. Uh, and you said you like to br brutal your words. So, you know, uh, yeah. so that's got to be hard as well when you're writing Zachary, like, because you're, you're really being hard on your words, right? Oh, I am. I, I feel like I need to probably read, especially this one with an honest eye, because I feel like even writing it, I've been so hard on myself with it. I'm like, it's not as good as I want it to be. 
I need to read it again to figure out if it's good, if it works in context. Because I think that I just have such high expectations, especially for this last chapter, that I need to, to remember that perfection is not something that's attainable. But good enough can still be really darn good. <laughs> Well, and I think you've done really good, Zach. Exactly. Like, you know, like you've been on here three times and every time we, we managed to have a good conversation about the books and about your life and how, how much has changed in your life. And we really get deep and in, in deep into the tea, right? And, and we always find a different avenue and a different uh, outline for everything that's coming your way. So, so what do you have for future plans besides I'm working up to become the principal and the book coming out in October. What else do you have going on? Zach? Well, um, I think the next biggest goal for us really is starting our family, whether that means having a baby or adopting um, whatever path we choose. I think that's our, our next big adventure um, for my wife and I is, is doing that. Well, if that happens, let me know so I can celebrate. <laughs> I will. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll put a, a nice little shout out for Miss Liz, who's a new new baby. So Zachary, I want to talk to you about. I have a couple of questions here for you that I want to get into before we leave because I think they're deeply important, and then they'll get to my listeners to know a little bit more about who you are. Mm -hmm. So, what was your best subject in school? My best subject, as probably is relatively obvious was always English followed closely by music. Okay. And do you prefer working with your hands or your mind? It depends on the day. So the mood, right? Yeah. I, I like crafting. Um, I have a, a basket full of yarn, so I, I will occasionally crochet. I also have, soap supplies. I like to make things. Um, I have plan. I'm re upholstering a chair right now. Um, and I, my dining room needs to be refinished because it was damaged. And so that's a project that I have, but of course, teaching and writing are both highly intellectual practices. So, um, I think that I like to work with my hands cause I don't like to be idle my work and my livelihood is dependent more on my mind, whereas my relaxation is more and my um, sort of side income from selling soaps and things like that is more for my hands. So it just varies on what my, what I'm needing in the current moment, whether it's relaxation or um, to be productive at the things that make a little bit more money than soap or, um, <laughs> or crocheted animals. I think I, I remember now, now that you said the crochet and then, so we talked about this the last time on the last, uh, last tea time, we mm -hmm. were talking about the crafts and hobbies that you have. Right. And you mm -hmm. mentioned hiking. Do you do a lot of hiking? Um, so there's not a ton of hiking here in Florida. Um, I do still walk around a lot. Um, occasionally we will go and find a, a walking trail and do that. Um, I love walking around or walking up and down the beach. Um, but whenever we go somewhere with mountains or with a, a rockier trail, I do enjoy um, a good hike. Yeah. And who was your best teacher you ever had? <sighs> who was my best teacher? Um, actually, I would say probably my education advisor in college was um, Dr. Faith Laughlin. I don't know if she will ever find these. Maybe I'll have to just send it to her um, so that she can see the shout out. She was, um, she is just a, a very kind and loving person, um, super encouraging. Um, and the couple classes I was able to take from her were wonderful. Although I kind of have to let her share with my other advisor because I, I was a double major in education and in music um, and Dr. Julie Penner was also a really incredible teacher. Always, um, we always started my voice lessons with a little bit of conversation and prayer. And I always felt more relaxed because of that. And that helped me sing better. So 
she um, she knew exactly what she needed whenever you needed something. And it was, um, it was a really incredible experience getting to be both, uh, getting to be a student of both of them. So are you still in contact with this teacher? Not often. Um, but, um, we're Facebook friends, so. So she could see this interview. Good. Yeah. So if you could go back and redo one year of school, what grade would you do and why? The short answer is if I, if I wouldn't. <laughs> Um, but I suppose if I have to pick a year to go back and redo, I guess I might go back and redo my freshman year um, of high school and convince my parents to send me to Forest Lake Academy ahead of them, even though they were planning to move to Florida anyway, because um, I actually went to high school here in Florida. Um, because if I had gone to high school here in Florida from the very beginning, I would have gotten to meet my wife one year so sooner. And, and that's magical. So mm -hmm. that, that, that makes a good reason to go back and redo that. Yeah. An extra year of knowing her would be nice, but. So Zachary, what final message would you like to leave everybody with tonight? Don't take life too seriously, but take it seriously enough. And if anybody wanted to reach you, how could they reach you? So my website is ZacharyHaganWrites.com. There is also um, Zachary Hagen underscore writes on Instagram and TikTok and Zachary Hagen writes on Facebook as well. Awesome. You're on TikTok, correct? I am. I'm not super active. I'm trying to get better at it. I'm trying to help find someone to help me with the social media stuff. <laughs> I'm absolutely terrible at it. I am... I'm old enough to not really be a social media native, but young enough that it's a little embarrassing that I don't know how to use it very well. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we talked about this a couple of times, right? Uh, you know, it is hard to be out there, especially when you're old, you know, when you're writing books and you're working full time, it's a lot of work to stay, to get that social media stuff out there as well. Even if it's just a two minute clip or a 30 second video, it takes a lot of work to get it all done, right? It is. Wow. So I, um, I've been talking to my sister-in-law. She's interested in doing some marketing for me because she loves the books and she wants more people to be reading them. I'm like, great, let's figure out what that looks like because I can't afford a ton, but I'm happy to accept the help and pay what I can to make that work. <laughs> Well, I, I it was a real pleasure having you back. I, you know, you've been here three seasons in a row, and I, I guess I'm doing something right because you keep coming back. So that's a good it's thing. Always a privilege. So, uh, again, if anybody would like to reach out to Zachary, you can check out his website. Uh, Zachary, if you'd like to spell it out for the audio listeners out there so they can check you out as well. Sure. So it is Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y-H-A-G-E-N. N W R I T E S dot com. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I want to give a special shout out to Mickey Mickelson from Creative Edge. He has been an honor to work with as well. And he's the one that gave me Zachary uh, three years ago. So we've been together three years. It's uh, every year we've been together. So thank you for that, Zachary. And thank you, Mickey, for all of the work that you've done. Thank you to all the listeners and supporters and this uh, audience out there. I do see you guys popping in and out. Thank you for that. Thank you for the questions tonight. And if you're watching the replay, please push hashtag replay. And if you'd like to know more about Miss Liz, you can check out Miss Liz at www.misslizistea.times.com. Uh, and if you'd like to know more about Zachary's books, give him a follow. Uh, check him out on TikTok and, and Facebook and Instagram. Correct, Zachary? That is correct. And I'll see everybody back here on the 20. Where am I going? on the 18th for 3 and 7 p.m. and then on the 22nd and then the 25th. So there's five more tea times for the month of July. Uh, and then the press release will be coming out on the 24th of July. So you'll see all the guests that are coming in August. So stay tuned for all of that. And until then, just keep serving your teas. 
stay true to yourself and you just never know where you're going to make a mess and spill it good for everyone to learn teaching education awareness does make a difference so thank you and i'll see everybody on thursday same time same place with a new tea for all of you to enjoy